And as I pull this in here, it's going to further kind of dull some of that color that was there because remember in the beginning, it was so bright. Like I over exaggerated how bright it was because I knew I could calm it down later. It's easy to neutralize something later. Now we've got our guest, Pat Fiorello. Pat is going to show you how to simplify a complex painting, and she's going to demonstrate using flowers. Pat, take it away. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate it. So, um, Eric, if you can share what we're going to paint today, the reference photo. Um, a lot of times people are intimidated when they're painting flowers because um, they're complex subject. There's a lot of petals, and the petals cast shadows on the other petals. So I find with students, there's a couple of things. One, the complexity is a little scary and overwhelming and they get lost in the petals and it gets frustrating. And two, um, it's hard to keep the colors clean. So I'm gonna show a method today that I like to use. Um, it's not the only method I use, but it's one that I use that's kind of uh, easy for flowers and kind of gets you into a loose mood and you can simplify without getting too bogged down. Um, so if you show that reference photo, and then what I usually do, um, even when I'm painting something from life, uh, if I can, I'll take a photo and I put it in Photoshop and um, I do um, what's called a posterize. And I've got the simple Photoshop, not the complex one. And I just go to filter, adjustments, posterize. And what that gives you is kind of a simple breakdown of the major shapes. And that's what we want to do when we're trying to handle a complex subject. Get back to the basics. What are the major shapes of light and shadow? And forget about the details and the small shapes uh, till the very end. What I'm going to do here is a method that uses color underneath as a transparent layer. And then we'll come on and, and build from there. But I'm working on a gesso board. Um, I use either gesso boards or the Centurion uh, oil prime linen, and I'm just taking a transparent color, and um, I have a list of the transparent colors for all the primaries and secondaries that I can send you. I think Amandine's going to put in the chat my email. If you're interested, I can send that to you, but you really don't need a lot of special colors to do this. If you have Indian yellow, permanent rose, and ultramarine blue, uh, those are kind of good basics to start with. And what I'm going to do is, is look at both my photo, or if I had the real subject here, the subject, and the, um, the posterize. And I'm looking for the light first. I'm kind of just putting in uh, with the Indian yellow, and I've thinned it with a little bit of a medium, which is a mix of 50-50 linseed oil and gamsol. And I'm just looking for big light shapes. That's how I'm starting. And we start simple, general and get more specific. So I'm not worried about which flower is which. I'm looking for the big shapes of life, even if they connect from one flower to the next. I assume this is oil paint, is that correct? Yeah, this is oil paint, but um, I did start my training as a watercolorist, so I do uh, feel real comfortable with this kind of method. So you're putting on a thin wash, basically, of transparent oil colors, just to get the shape and your placement of the lights first. I'm using the yellow uh, where I have the light because I'm thinking of this kind of an impressionist palette that the sunlit light areas will be more of a yellowish tone. And then I'm gonna bring in my cooler tones for the shadows, you know, much like a, a Soroya approach where he really exaggerated uh, the lights with the yellow sunlight and all. So if you can see here, I'm just really thinking about the abstracted shapes. And I'm, I'm like on the hunt for where are there big pieces of light? Because petals are complex, there'll be little bits of light popping out here and there all over the place. But you've got to kind of override that and just say, where are there big chunks of light? Almost like I could cut it out with a scissor um, it's got to be that big. If it's a little tiny light accent, we can always add that later. Um, so here we go. So I've got the light in. Um, now I'm just going to switch. I'm using a, a soft haired brush, um, just a flat brush, 
but I've got my lights in. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go to where are the shadow shapes, right? So it's very simple. Where's the light? Where's the shadow? And kind of what is the color in there? Inside a flower, it's often very chromatic. It will be darker. It will be warmer. Um, it's kind of like if you have your hand open flat, it's all hit by light. But the minute you start going like this, inside it gets darker and warmer the same thing happens with the flower as it cups in so i'm looking at my photos and i see you know it definitely seems warmer it, this particular flower seems more pinkish orangey in the center so i'm going to pick up a little of that permanent rose again another transparent color at this point i'm only using transparents i'm not using my cadmiums i'm not using white and then um maybe a little pink um, again, putting in the medium to thin it down and I'm just doing the general shape, you know, and we're always painting general to specific. So I'm putting in the general shape of where I see shadows. I could add a little of that yellow in here too, to warm it up a little further, a little variety. Again, I'm just doing something pretty general and then it here. Uh, this gets a little bit darker if I have a, you know, something like a transparent oxide red or a transparent oxide brown, I might add that in there to warm it and darken it up a little bit more. So all I'm thinking here is big shapes. Where do I see the big shapes? And this is just a transparent underpainting. Think of it as placeholders. Here I see a little piece of light that I missed here. So I'm gonna add that in. I'm not worried about the exact color right now because I know I'm gonna come back with something over this. So um, this again is just like my starting place, my underneath part. So it looks very graphic, very basic, it's flat. At this point, that's all it needs to be. The next thing I need to do is something with this background here. So I'm thinking about the background and I want it to go maybe like a gray, a neutral color so that this color inside the flowers is most prominent. So I'm actually gonna take an orange. I'm thinking ahead and saying, I'm going to get to a gray here. Maybe I'll mix a blue and uh, like ultramarine and cad red light to get my orange to get my uh, gray so underneath if i start with the orange and this is um gamblin's transparent earth orange which i like because it's an orange but it's a little bit dull and i'm just going to block in very generally the background shape i know something's going over this so i don't need to be too precise you know, always when I'm painting, I'm, I'm, my aim is to get something in the end that's gonna be beautiful, that someone's gonna enjoy, that it's gonna be uplifting. At the, um, at the outset, you know, I'm not worried about precision or anything exact. I'm just blocking in quickly, freely, you know, without a lot of uh, being very specific about anything. I do see the center of those flowers it is a little bit darker, the very deep center. And I'm gonna put that in now with that same pink and, and brown that I had, again, all transparent colors. It helps me re, you know, see where the deepest part of the flower is, like what the orientation is for the flower. So I will put that in now, even though it's a small shape, it's important because it's helping me know where things are at. And then the last thing I'm going to put in in this underpainting portion is, you know, a placeholder for some leaves on the bottom. Um, again, ge general. These will be important later because they will help me cut out uh, the edges of some of these shapes. But I'm treating the leaves, even though there might be five or six leaves here, I'm treating them as one mass. Um, and then we can always divide them later. So. My approach is always, you know, start with big and general. Um, we can always cut things down later, chop them up. But if you have a lot of itsy bitsy pieces, you can't sew them back together. 
uh, in my classes, I say, you know, think about a steak. You know, if you have a steak, you can always break it into smaller pieces. But if you have chopped meat, it's hard to get it back into a steak. So we don't want a lot of fragmentation in the painting. We want it to be solid so that when, in the end, when you look at it across the room, it hangs together. Um, so we'll have, you know, viewed from far away, it's got to be solid. But then when someone comes up close, we want interest and interesting brushwork and color and all of that. Okay, so here we go. So that's the basic uh, land. What did that take? Five minutes or so just to get where things go. Um, at this point, I would probably let it dry for, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes at least. Since we don't have a lot of time now, I did uh, make another version of this earlier today that I'm going to switch to just because we don't have the time for drying. You don't need to dry it overnight or anything like that, just a little bit to let things set up. So we had phase one, which was all transparent, a colored lay-in, basically placeholders where things are going. Now we can get into more specificity, but we still want to avoid getting caught up in details. So what I'm gonna go for now are the big shapes. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is knock in this background just so we can, you know, tone down this bright orange color. Like if you see the painting at this point, you're like, whoa, that's really garish. But it's not going to stay that way. That's just to set the stage for what's to come. And I'm going to put paint right on top of this, which will uh, dull down that color in the background. And But it gives me a layer of of interest that I've got a color underneath and in places it'll be popping out. Um, we mentioned earlier about watercolor and, it, you know, in watercolors, part of the beauty is you have the glow of the paper that uh, comes through the transparent colors. In this method, you kind of get that approach too because um, little bits and pieces of this transparent will glow through and the canvas is actually uh, you know, backlighting that paint. So it kind of gives a nice effect. So I'm gonna just go quickly for the background so that we um, get rid of that orange but, and we have a little bit better sense of where the edges of the flowers are gonna be. But I can just you know, come back in here again. This was ultramarine blue and uh, cat orange or cat red light, I'm sorry. And now I'm looking for where do I want the edges of these flowers. Just now I have a value contrast. I can see where those go. So now I'm looking at my photo a little bit for, you know, more information of the shapes. And the edges of flowers are really important. You could uh, not have any details in the center of a flower, but if you get the perimeter shape correct, you know, correct, people will get what kind of flower it is. So that's one of the most important things with flower. What is the perimeter shape? That cues people that are looking at it to what type of flower it is. So as I'm painting this, I'm leaving a little of the orange to pop through. And I'm coming back here, seeing where do I want this edge of this to, to go. I can always clean this up later, get more specific. Right now, I'm just trying to find my way of where the big shapes are gonna be. And we'll just be real simple down here. I can always come back and adjust anything, which is one of the beauties of the oil paint. You want to change a shape, a color, a value, you know, you can do it later. If you get it, you know, right from the beginning, that's great. But you always know you have the opportunity to adjust. Okay, so now we've got the background in. We'll leave that for now. And the next thing, I'm going to get a clean brush. And I use, I usually like flat um, brushes. And I'm going to start looking for the shadow shapes. So let's block in these shadow shapes. Now I'll go back to 
you know, what kind of color do I want? I've got this reddish pink underneath, but I don't want to leave it that bright. Um, you know, when I look at the photo, it's, you know, more of a grayish color, but you do see a glow coming through. And that's the benefit of doing this type of method with the colored underpainting. You will still get that glow. I don't need to do, um, a, you know, a layered painting. I can still do an a la prima type approach, but I can get a glow. So I'm mixing up a little bit more of that same gray that I had for the background, which was the ultramarine blue and the cad red light and a little bit of white. And I might even have a little bit of a green handy because I do see some green color in there. Could be bounce light from the leaves or the environment around it. So I'll just have some options to play with there. And I'm just going to look for the shape. I'm not looking for any petals whatsoever. I'm looking for shape. And I'm going to glide this paint over. If that got a little bit too blue there, you know, I can adapt as we're going along. Okay, there we go. So I'm just looking for shadow. I always feel like I'm a, a hunter. I'm on the hunt, on the hunt looking for shadow, and then I'll be on the hunt looking for light. Again, I'm still pretty, I'm putting in light and shadow next, but I'm still going to leave it fairly rough edged because I'll come back a little bit after that and then start making the transitions between the light and the shadow. So I'm gliding this paint on, but I'm letting some of the pink underneath glow through. So that when this is finished, it, it, it will have like a complexity of the color because there's something underneath that pops out here and there. And then I'm looking for where else is their shadow shape? Down here, their shadow shape. Down here, their shadow shape. So like I said, I'm, I'm constantly looking at my subject and I'm just saying, where do I see more shadow? Where do I see more shadow? And then putting in those shapes. And I'll come back after this and refine it. But at this point, I just want to get the, the light and the shadow in without totally obliterating what's underneath. Okay, so I'm starting to get that in. And then for this other flower, the shadows on this are a little bit lighter, so I can add a little bit more white into that. Looking for the shadow shape. And these, you know, the posterized photo especially helps me to kind of zero in on the shape of that shadow. Now I'm going to go to the inner shadow. In a second. And that seems a little warmer than these shadows. And it is an inside shadow, which kind of makes sense. So I might pull in a little bit more of um, warmth, but it's still going to be a little bit darker and a little bit duller than the colors that I've got down there. And I'm looking for the overall, where do I see shadow in, inside this flower now? If you guys are enjoying this, make sure to hit the like or the, the thumbs up. And if you have questions, put them in the comments section. And be sure to tell us where you're watching from because we have a prize of value specs today, uh, allowing you to see your values better. Okay, I'm going to switch now. I've got like a basic, basic structure in here. Now we're going to go for the fun part to add in some of the lights. So I'm going to take my white paint, add in like a 
tiniest hint of cad yellow light and start putting in where I see light. So, you know, I, I, when I'm looking at these photos, where's the biggest place that I see a chunk of light? Right here, you know, get in this light. Like I said, it's got a tiny bit of the cad yellow light in it, so it'll be a little bit lit, but um, I've got this yellow underneath that's also gonna give me that sunlit glow. So I'm already, you know, I already primed the pump with this underpainting to say, where do I wanna go with these colors? And that comes around here. Um, you may need to, you know, wipe off your brush quite a bit. Uh, as I said, I changed to a different brush once I started using the white. Um, but you will inevitably pick up some of the other colors. If that's okay, you can just wipe it off and start again. Okay, here we go. This shape. So I'm looking for the shape. There's little bits of light in here. Not worried about it right now. Um, there are some interesting bigger pieces of light here. As the light comes down, it hits some of these petals that pop out. That's the structure of the flower. Inside you've got depth, but some pieces pop out into the light. I don't want to get all of them now and get too caught up in that and get fussy over all these petals, but there is a large interesting shape of light and I want to capture that at this point. You know, when you think about something complex, um, you want to paint the essence. We're always talking in art, capture the essence of something. But what does that actually mean? To me, capturing the essence of something is like asking myself, what is essential about this subject? And, you know, what makes this a garden rose? What about what is the shape, the colors, the texture? the architecture or the, the formation of it. Those are the things that really are essential. So as I look at this flower, I keep asking myself, what is essential to start communicating that this is not only a garden rose, but this particular garden rose. So that's really the light and shadow of that whole flower. Let's go quickly and do the other. Um, as I want to get all this in, this is kind of the next level. It's not really the block in, but it's getting the big form in. And then we're going to start connecting the light and the shadow and softening edges so that it starts to feel uh, more like a soft flower. And I'm coming around here. You guys enjoying this? Make sure to give a thumbs up or a heart. Thank you. And I know I'm moving pretty quick here because we only have a short amount of time, but um, I hope you're tracking along with it. If you have any questions, just please feel free to ask. I'll, I'll answer. I'll, if there are questions, I'll, uh, I'll read them off from the comments. All right. Great. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate it. So again, I'm, I'm really like abstracting these shapes um, and not thinking about is that shape a petal or what is it? I'm really just trying to get the big chunks of shape and I can go in and uh, alter those as, as need be. So I've got pretty much the big stuff in now. Now we start getting into how do we bridge this stuff together? Uh, and how do we adapt the colors and all that? As we see that, you know, you've got the shadow here and we've got the light here, but there's like a soft transition. So I'm gonna come now in with my brush and start softening some of those edges. Need a little bit more white. And there's a, it's kind of a lavenderish transition there. I'm looking now for where is there the transition between the light and the shadow. First, starting with the big transitions, you know, just these flowers will roll in. So I want to get some of that in.
where now I'm looking for where are these transitions? So you're taking, you know, piece by piece, not petal by petal. I'm looking for the big shapes. And then how do those big shapes connect? And where, okay, this is softened here. And behind here, there is more shadow. So I'm just like, as I said, I'm always like on the hunt for looking for a particular shape that I'm painting. Here we've got this nice kind of angular piece here. We'll take that. As we start getting further into this, there are small places where one petal will cast a shadow on the next. And I can just go very softly and make a little indication of a line there. Not too much. I don't have to call it out. You don't need a lot in order to um, show that something's going on there, that there are these petals. Okay. And as I pull this in here, it's going to further kind of dull some of that color that was there because remember in the beginning it was so bright, like I over exaggerated how bright it was because I knew I could calm it down later. It's easy to neutralize something later. It's hard to recapture something high chroma once it's dull. So in this method, you know, I'm erring on the side of make it too bright. Um, and then I can lose some as I need to along the way. Here, this piece um, comes out of the center, but it loses an edge as it goes in. There's sort of, it's in the shadow and then it pops out. So now I'm getting more and more specific. I can start looking for places where maybe there might be more little bits of light in here that I want to pop out. So I've got the major light and shadow. Where else are there little pieces of light that might be interesting indicators? Like I said, what's essential for this flower? Uh, what do I want to say about this flower uh, that I feel is important? And what things can I let go of? And I think that's the biggest thing with simplifying something that's complex. We tend to, especially for painting from a photo, but even from life, we see things there and then we're like, well, I should put that in because it's there. Uh, because it's there is never a good reason to put something in the painting. Um, I, you know, I tell my students the reason to put something in the painting, there's only two good reasons. One, it helps your story, or two, it helps the composition, the design. Other than that, because it's there is not a good reason to put something into the painting. So with every stroke, you're making a choice. Is this important enough to include in here? So we're starting to include some shapes. There is a shape here that is a, a light that pops out, and that's pretty distinctive. So I'm going to just declare that, that that shape is important. It's important to me. It might not be important you know, when you select what, what you'd like to have in your painting. But these shapes in here have less contrast than out here but there's a lot of softening of some of these edges. So we're starting to build a little bit more form. Um, I think I'm gonna leave that one for now, come back and work here a little bit. Um, I'd like to change this color a little bit. Uh, you have my permission. Okay, good, good. Uh, I think it, it would be nice to have a little bit more kind of green bouncing in there, not so purpley. So, you know, and just for a little variety. And like I said, there might be some green popping up as bounce light from uh, some of the leaves around here. Just be different from that one. Okay, so now let's see where we have transitions here. We have a transition, you know, between the, as things come in and the very edge that's, that's out in the light there are these soft transitions here. If I left those real hard edges, it wouldn't feel like a flower anymore. So we have to make those transitions happen. Back here, 
um, it's nice that the shadow of this flower gets lost into the shadow of that flower. Where you have opportunities to connect like values is always good. You're making bigger shapes, bigger masses, rather than, again, chopping things down into small pieces. Okay, let's see where we go here. Again, I'm bringing a little bit more a little bit more light and air into this here. I, as I'm doing that, I can refine this shape with a little negative painting. Say, okay, what does this shape really look like? Maybe carve into here. So things you, you may, may have missed on the first real generalized part of the block in now as we're getting into you know more of a refinement and finishing stage now you can get more specific now you're dealing with smaller shapes what are details they're smaller shapes that's really all details are so now i'm looking where do i see little pieces of light that might be real helpful to put in there is a beautiful piece of light right here i think that's important because it is indicating that there is a petal there. So a few of these petals, there's probably hundreds of petals in these flowers, but I'm not going to paint hundreds of petals. I'm just going to paint just enough to suggest that this is the kind of flower that has a lot of petals. That's all I need to do, we're suggesting. And I'm going to let that set up. I want to real quickly, how are we doing with the time, Eric? Are we okay for time? We're okay. I'm going to let you go a little long. Okay, good. I want to uh, lighten up this, um, this background a little bit. It's feeling a little bit heavy to me. Here's, so, a, uh, here's a question from Roxy Nadon. Nadan. Okay. <clears throat> do you stick with your original set of colors for the transitions or do you ever introduce an additional color for the transitions? Um, I'm pretty much sticking with colors that are already there. Um, the, to me, the transitions, I mean, uh, there's kind of a, you know, they're not pure colors. They're a grayish purple, a grayish green. Um, you know, I'll look to see what, what I see in the image. Um, but just for harmony's sake, I will probably not add a totally new color, introduce a new color at that point. I mean, I would, the transition should reflect the color of the object, but you know, maybe with less light than the lit portion. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be similar to what you've already got. But I hope that addresses that there. So I'm now that I'm coming now that I'm coming back with um, a little bit lighter value here in the background gives me another opportunity to carve in these shapes, so I can get a little bit more specific with the negative painting on these shapes. That that's starting to look a little bit better to me. Um, and I'm coming in here. This is so even a little bit lighter to let a little of this back edge pop out. But um, I might not want the whole thing to pop out because it's kind of nice to lose a little bit of that. That's in the shadow. Do I need to see all of it? Not really. Uh, I want to concentrate the contrast in the light. But if in my shadows, I might have opportunities to lose edges. That's a good thing. Okay. Any other questions? Not so far. Okay. Good. Okay, I'm going to put in now um, some of this green. We, we've only have the underpainting still in the green. I'm just gonna put a little bit, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but it will help me um, shore up some of these edges um, on the bottom portion of the flower. So I think I'm gonna take um, maybe a little Viridian and transparent oxide brown or red um, and uh, get a real nice rich dark. And then I, now I am looking to get a little bit more specific, like where do I want to call out an edge? Like this has a really nice sharp edge there. And they say, well, it's not the, the 
main focus of the painting down there. However, the little sharp edges of these on the roses do communicate rose shape. So for that reason, um, I do want to have a few um, sharp edges down here because it is telling me something about the essence of this flower. Um, so I will come in and have harder edges in the light again, but it's not so bad to have, um, you know, a few edges down here that tell me the character of this flower. There is That's a question like about the light, the white that you use. Yeah. What is it? Um, I am using uh, M. Graham titanium white. Okay, thank you. Nice thing about uh, M. Graham, it's made with walnut oil so you can eat your paint. Uh, no, I still don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would not yeah. recommend that. No, I don't recommend it either. But they are, um, they are nice. I used to love the Lefranc uh, white, but it's no longer sold in the U.S. And um, so I had to find other solutions. So, okay, so we've got some... Now it's starting to shape up more as some flowers. Now I can start kind of going in for the very end here and then add some little more details. I do want to get this darker, you know, as I look at the photo, you know, the photos lie sometimes, but just in relationship, it wouldn't be bad to get a few of these things darker. I can always make them lighter again. And then where, now where else do I see some suggestions of other petals in here. Again, I was just looking for the suggestions. Um, actually, what we can start doing is some of these places, just putting in sort of a little, little line to indicate there's some activity going on here. It doesn't take much. I mean, you see how little, and you know, when we're done, I'll have this closer up. Um, how little you can put in and it starts to suggest something's going on. Here's a question from Swati Say. Oh yeah. Pat, how do you decide which colors to use in the center or for any picture for that matter? Do you spend time introspecting the picture? Um, well, I'm looking at, you know, uh, the photo or if I had the real flowers and really kind of going off that. And then I say, you know, what, what color family is it? Is it more yellow, more blue, more red? Sometimes it's hard to tell because it's not a pure color, but which one of those does it lean towards? And for the initial underpainting, you know, then I say like, which, which transparent color do I have in that color family? Um, so, you know, in yellow, I know the Indian yellow is a transparent color and that's a very good, uh, good choice. Um, you're going to modify the colors anyway. So as long as you're in the ballpark in the beginning, uh, that may be enough to get you there. Now in here, there, there are a whole bunch of petals, but I don't want to put in a whole bunch of petals. But what I'll do is very lightly with my brush, just make, make some marks that are kind of the gesture of those petals but I'm doing it very lightly and letting it kind of get lost into what's already there. This paint is wet, so I can lose some of these pieces right into the wet paint there, which makes it not as hard edge, not as specific. I'm looking for where might there be some pieces, like over here, and the, the more you look, the more you see. Uh, sometimes that's a problem though, because we see too much and we want to put everything in. Um, but as I'm looking here, okay, there's a little piece of white that really pops out there. This piece of white is pretty, is pretty important. And that one's really pretty significant. So all these other little ones, maybe, you know, they're nice to see, you know, the more, you, like I said, the more you look, the more you're going to see, and you're going to want to put everything in. But at some point it gets to be overkill. So... And just soften that edge. Where else could I have something? This area is kind of empty, but I don't want too much attention here, but I'm just putting a little suggestion that something is in there. 
So, you know, I use the reference photo for information, but I'm not too hung up on having to get everything exactly right. At the end, you've got a lot going on here. So, you know, people will think, wow, there's you know, a lot of petals in that flower, but you've kind of tricked yeah. them, you know. Pat, I think what we're going to do is I'm just going to come on and make a couple of quick announcements, and then we're, we're going to have about, oh, maybe five minutes to wrap up. Okay. All right. So uh, why don't you step back, take a quick break, and I will have you right back. Our guest today is Pat uh, Fiorola. I'm going to get it wrong. I always get names wrong. And she's a fabulous painter today. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur. We have a gift for you today. It's a free video, five plus hours, 50, 50, 50, 50 of our top artists. Uh, and you can get it on uh, streaming video or, or if you want DVD, you can have that too. Uh, just check it out. Uh, DVD, I think you pay the shipping. I want to tell you guys that we have a plein air convention coming up in May. It's going to be a blast. We also have uh, coming up in, in June, uh, my publisher's Invitational, where we paint together for a week. It's not a workshop. It's just a, about 100 of us painting together in the beautiful scenery. And we just have a blast. And I'd like to invite you to that. Also want to mention to you that um, we have PaintTube TV, PaintTube.tv, where we have hundreds of professionally produced Hollywood-level art instruction courses that we've created by the world's top artists. And uh, we're also now on Roku. So if you have a Roku, you can uh, select which apps you want. Make sure you select PaintTube.tv. All right. And again, you can subscribe to this. Uh, just by going to YouTube, Streamline Art is what you search. And every broadcast we've done since the beginning of COVID, hundreds now, uh, are there. And every day it's a different artist. Once in a while, some art marketing training. I'm also going to be doing art marketing training at the Plein Air Convention. I've got some great things we're going to be working on. So you, you don't want to miss that. Okay, now back to Pat. Pat, you get to finish it up. Okay, we're coming in. Coming in for the kill here. Um, I think what I want to do just right now is uh, crisp up a few of these edges on this flower. This is my kind of main flower here. And now I can just come in with the background color. And if I want to, you know, make a little, a few of these edges a little bit sharper, you know, this is the time to do it. So you see, I was not that concerned in the very beginning with having this flower exact because uh, I know I can come in back in later and really crisp that up and, and make those adjustments. And I think uh, it's important to po point out that you're carving in rather than trying to put white over the dark. Exactly. I'm using the background um, to carve in the shape, the negative painting. And, um, you know, you really, you know, it, it's very, very handy because, you know, it's hard to go put the white on and make it exact, but to carve in with the background uh, is a lot easier and gives you a beautiful, sharp edge. You could come in with a knife too, a palette knife and do that. Um, okay, the last things, I'm not going to do anything more on the, on the leaves because those are pretty basic, but where else do I maybe want a few hints of more petals in here? Um, there is, this one still is pretty, um, pretty light. I want that. That's characteristic of this particular flower. I'm gonna come back in and just put a little bit more of a highlight on that where these are, are lit. And then a couple little a couple little places where there's little hints to cast shadows. Maybe over here, but not too much attention there. I mean, that's the edge. That's in the shadow. Maybe over here, there's sort of, you know, a little piece of glint of light that's there. So I don't think I'm going to do too much more in here, but I hope it gives you the idea of you can take something that's super complicated, that's got hundreds and hundreds of petals, and just simplify it into its overall shape, which is indicative of that type of flower, the light, the shadow shapes and then a couple of suggestions here and there, uh, paying attention to the shapes, the edges, 
And what's most important? If you take one thing away today, when we're capturing the essence of a subject, that means what's essential about that subject. And when you, you know, look at what is essential, it means, if you look in the dictionary, it's what's necessary or extremely important. You know, this shape in the light, this shape in the light, that's extremely important to describe this flower. Uh, these 110 different little petals in here are not extremely important. If you have a few, that's enough to communicate, you know, what your subject is about. So, you know, I hope the next time that you're painting, you know, if you feel that urge to put in everything and, and be perfect and get it exact, remember, you know, we're painting for beauty. You know, the, what we're trying to do is create something beautiful that's uplifting and have an experience that we enjoy creating. It's not a test of exactness. We really just want to capture the spirit of something and what is essential to communicate that to the viewer. So, um, you know, that would be the words I would leave you with. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, chime in or feel free to contact me. Why don't you come back on, why don't you come back on okay. camera? We're going to put your contact information in the comments section. Oh, you're upside down. Now you're right side I up. Know, so no, 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 quickly. Fix, no fix. <laughs> well, how about everybody give Pat a round of applause? Absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much for that. And, uh, uh, you're right. I mean, you're suggesting a flower. You're not, you're not having to paint every detail, which is a temptation for, especially for beginners, but a uh, great demonstration. When you started that out, I thought, how is she going to make that work with that bright color in there? And then when you muted it, all of a sudden it started to feel like glowing color. So that's fabulous. Yeah. And I'll, I'll do a little bit more on this and then maybe we'll post it in the site or whatever so people can see it. But there is a, a glow because you've got those colors that are backlit underneath the colors on top. So yeah, um, I'll quickly just show this is a finished yeah. one that, that you had done. And so you, you can get an indication of what more she did there. Well, Pat, thank you again so much for being on Art School Live. We're honored to have you. I hope you'll post the finished piece uh, in the comments on, on Facebook or on, on YouTube or wherever. Okay. And uh, we also have put all your contact information, your social media on the comments section. So thank you again for being on today. We really appreciate oh, it. Thank you. It was my pleasure, Eric. And thanks, everyone. If I can help in any way, just be in touch. Thank you.